Hey everybody, it's Joe again. Uh, sorry there, was just eating my dinner, a burrito, homemade burrito, yum. Um, Alright, Mount Zion, this is video four. Video one, all the verses, uh, and how we will do this discussion. Video two, all the descriptions of hell, of its place, of its location, of the tortures of hell, and then the description uh, using scripture through all that, of course. And also for the uh, description of uh, what the prisoners or the lost will react to these tortures. Um, in video one, I told you uh, how I was going to do this discussion with you. Um, so I was going to give Bible verses, which I did in video one. I will point out the description of hell and its tortures I did in video two. Video 3 was a recap of video 1 and 2, because there was a lot of information. This is video 4, how we get to hell. Um, well, first, um, I kind of went over that also in video 3, but we send ourselves to hell. God is not a monster, and I will never say, and I will never agree, that God sends us to hell. You can say all you want that I'm saying that God sends us to hell, but that is not what I'm saying. We send ourselves to hell. Um, I even read you the scripture which stated that we sent ourselves to hell and that hell was just for the devil and the demons or Lucifer, whatever you want to call him. Um, and then if we go, we go as intruders because it was never meant for us. If it was never meant for us, God would not send us there and do the opposite of what he created it for. We send ourselves. He allows us to send ourselves there even though he has the door open to come on into heaven. See what I'm saying? Big difference. Go over video three again. Because uh, I want a great detail about the difference. In the limited amount of time, of course, that I was given. Um, so that's how we get to hell. Another point I didn't get to mention that I wanted to mention to you in video one is then I wanted to discuss with you um, annihilationism versus uh, the belief of hell or believers of hell. Annihilis uh, annihilationists versus hell believers. Um, go into the different forms of annihilationism. Uh, I said I wanted to know a little bit about you, the way you stand, so I can better understand you, and hopefully we can get a better understanding of each other. Uh, so now i got seven minutes to do it, a little under, so let's go. Um, and of course, I might have to do this in video five as well. And don't forget my questions in the last video. Um, annihilationism is directly related to the other... Uh, false uh, doctrines of conditional immortality. And of course I say false because I believe it to be wrong. Um, conditional immortality. The human soul is not immortal. It is just given eternal life. And then you have annihilationism. That God will destroy slash annihilate, therefore the word, uh, the wicked, leaving only the saved or righteous to live eternally. Annihilationism, and this is where you can come in, is split into two mainstream parties. Um, and I'm about to go into each party, uh, describe them to you. Please let me know which one you fall under because you described uh, the definition, the broad term of definition of an um, annihilation. Man, I can't speak tonight. Annihilationism uh, in your video, in the original video, which we got introduced to each other. Um, you got party one. Annihilated right after death. You're you're gone if you're lost. Party two. Um, they will be pu uh, punished for a short time in hell or the lake of fire. They do not distinguish between the two parts of hell, which I described in video three. Uh, they only uh, put hell and the lake of fire together as one and not two parts. Um, before being annihilated... Um, which one are you, sir? Just so I can understand you more a little bit better. 
um, so I can completely understand exactly where you're coming from on your points. Because they, you know, party wanted to do slight a little bit between each other. Uh, the main religions uh, in the world that teach and support annihilationism. Uh, please let me know if you're one of these. Uh, a Seventh Day Adventist, uh, the Jehovah Witnesses, the Advent Christian, the and this one's kind of hard for me to pronounce, so please be willing to forgive if this is you and I've said it wrong. Christophidelians, and then a group called Bible Students. Apparently a new religious group popping up. Um, and if you're not one of those, just say I'm not, just annihilationists. Um, um, here's some... Bible references for both. I'll try to get in within the four minutes. If not, I'll do it in video four, uh, five. Annihilationists. Those who support it will usually always refer to the Old Testament. In your video, you did post a lot about scriptures from the Old Testament using old Hebrew words as well, like Shoal, which we went over in video three and in video two. Um, the annihilationists will support hell for a short time uh, or those in the party two that do support hell only say hell is for a short time. They will use some New Testament ver uh, verses, but most who do not believe hell at all, or that does not believe that people go to hell at all, usually only mostly use Old Testament. Um, now at this point, I'm just going to kind of go over um, the book of what annihilation annihilationists believe, um, just to get a better understanding and everyone else can too. Almost all biblical scholars point out that the ancient Hebrew uh, Hebrews had no concept of an eternal soul and, the, and that the afterlife was just simply Sheol, an abode of the dead, a bleak end to existence akin to the Greek word Hades. Hell believers, uh, they generally refer to the New Testament where Christ himself talked, uh, people, uh, talked about people in a located place called Hell. For example, the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. During Christ's ministry on earth, the Jews largely believed in a future resurrection for the believer or righteous uh, to go to heaven and the resurrection of the wicked for the judgment. The wicked waited in Sheol, which translated as hell, for all those passages. Annihilationists say you burn some paper with fire, as an example, and it is eternally destroyed. And this is how we should view hell. Uh, here's some counterpoints against this. Um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were cast in a fire and were not consumed by it. Uh, Revelation 20:15, people would be sent to hell, so it has to have a location if you're being sent to something. Uh, you can't go to something if it doesn't exist. Moses saw the burning bush, but the worst bush was not consumed, and God can do all things to say not you are limiting God by agreeing with this paper and fire it's eternally gone a minute and 20 seconds uh, to go uh, so more likely I'm going to continue this in video 5 um, annihilationists um, argue that a loving God would not torture forever his creation um, Revelation 20:10. You know, states that we would be tortured forever, but like I said, God does not send us to hell, we send ourselves. Some annihilationists believe that God will torture the devil and his demons forever, but they too are also his creation, so if he's going to be torturing them forever, um, or, or uh, that they're going to be tortured in hell, because that's where hell is, is and it's for the angels, that, you know, the demons and, you know, um, he doesn't want us to go there for salvation. So therefore, um, if he's going to torture that, he's going to allow torture for us if that's what we choose because we get the will to choose between heaven and hell. All right, I got 20 seconds left, so I'm going to end this and then restart it in video 5. Thanks, and God bless. See you in video 5.